One of the commenters on my channel requested a video on throttle PID attenuation, uh, so here's one. Uh, first of all, if you want to learn more about TPA, uh, I suggest just going and checking out the Clean Flight documentation where they discuss TPA in, in some depth. TPA is not really complicated. Uh, what TPA does is at the point where you set the throttle breakpoint, there is a linear reduction in your PID gains between that point and max throttle. Okay, so the reason that, that this is useful is uh, as the thrust produced by the system increases, the especially the P gains most of all, but also the D gains uh, need to be reduced. And this is the same as if you go from a 3S setup to a 4S setup, you would need lower P gains. Uh, the P, someone once put it, uh, if you think about you want to keep the total magnitude of the correction the same, then as thrust goes up, the gain goes down. So as you throttle up, of course, the motors make more thrust. And this can take you, especially if you've got a copter that is very tightly tuned, like right on the edge of oscillation, it can take you from a point where you're on the edge of oscillation to a point where you're over the edge of oscillation and you're getting oscillations as you increase the throttle. So TPA scales those things back. Uh, one thing to note about TPA is that in earlier versions of clean flight, TPA affected P, I, and D equally. And this is actually not how it ought to work because if you think about it, the, the eye gain doesn't have a problem as throttle goes up. In fact, if anything, you want the copter to be just a little tighter, uh, high, if anything, higher eye gain as the throttle goes up because the faster you're flying, the more stability and the more sort of attitude correction you need. Uh, so it used to be on 1.9, Clean Flight 1.9, that uh, if you had TPA and you throttled up, the copter would start to get, uh, wouldn't have attitude hold. And it would you need to correct it with the sticks, which is the last thing you want to be doing when you're when you got high throttle and you're flying fast. So Boris fixed that in beta flight, and I'm 99% sure that that pull request got integrated into Clean Flight 1.10, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I also think it may only have been implemented on uh, PID controllers one and two. I don't know. You should you should do some, do some research if you really want to know. But the takeaway is that. If you've got a relatively high TPA value and you find that as you raise the throttle, it feels like your eye gain has gone down, that's why. That's that's really something that ought to be fixed uh, if it hasn't been fixed, but I think it has. Um, so, uh, so P and D get reduced as the throttle goes up. Another thing I want to point out is that TPA is not really useful for tuning out prop wash oscillations. So if you are drop the throttle and descend rapidly to get under an air gate, and as you arrest the descent by raising the throttle, you get some oscillations. That's not really what TPA is for. Uh, the reason for that is that prop wash oscillations can often happen at, at moderate throttle, mid throttle, or mid to you know, 1500 or 1600, or maybe even a little lower, depending on how high powered your setup is. So if you hover at 1350, then you may get prop wash oscillations at at 1400 or 1450, so relatively moderate values. Whereas TPA is most effective if you're getting oscillations that are coming out at higher throttle values around 1600, 1700 and up. Okay, so prop wash oscillation is not really going to be useful to try to tune out with TPA. So how, when do you know that you need TPA? <clears throat> if you've got your copter tuned so the PIDs are about right during hover or cruise, and then as you raise the throttle, you start to, you know, for example, you try to do a, a strong climb out. So you're cruising, you're flying forward, and you're going to fly over some trees, and you punch the throttle really high. And as you're climbing out, you get some oscillations. It, it's caused specifically by the raise in throttle. Nothing else has really changed except that you've raised the throttle, and you go from a smooth wah to a wah. You know, the, the, somebody called it the goat, goat motor sound. Yeah, okay, well, that's my bad impression of a motor that's oscillating. Um, that, that might indicate you need TPA. Um, if you raise the throttle to full and you don't get oscillation, then you don't need TPA. So not everybody likes TPA. Some people feel like they want to tune their copter so that they have good performance at all throttle positions and they don't want the PIDs changing. And if that works for you, more power to you. But for, for me at least, on my setup, I feel like if I tune the copter to get rid of oscillations at high throttle, it's not it's not tight enough, uh, responsive enough at mid or low throttle. 
So I like to tune I like to tune my PIDs to be as tight and responsive, as high high gain as I need them to be at cruise or mid throttle. And then if oscillations come out at high throttle, use PID to tune that a little bit. Um, you can use black box to tune PID uh, TPA. Sorry, I think I said PID a minute ago. You can use black box to tune TPA, but I honestly find that the main thing that's useful for is finding where I want the throttle breakpoint to be. So I like to review my high def videos after flight, and I'll just listen for oscillations starting uh, uh, at uh, during periods where I've raised the throttle. And if I don't hear that, then I'm fine. If I do hear that, then I start to add some TPA. And I'll look at the black box log to see at what throttle position the oscillations seem to be coming in. So if I start to see oscillations at around 1650, I might have a, a TPA breakpoint of around 1600. Now bear in mind that in order to change the uh, slope here, in order to change this line, we can change either the throttle breakpoint, right, which makes the slope more abrupt, or we can change the magnitude of the TPA, which moves this, this point here, also making the slope more abrupt. But you can see that those are two different things. So if I've got a scenario where the TPA is not coming in aggressively enough, I'm getting oscillations at like this point. One thing I might do is I might increase the TPA percent, which would lower this at the max point and change this point as well by comparison. The other thing I might do is I might lower the TPA breakpoint. You see those have two different effects on the line. So uh, you're going to want to think about whether you want to increase the amount of TPA across the entire curve or whether you want to have TPA come in earlier, which sort of smooths out the curve a little bit. It makes the curve less sloped, but it starts reducing the, the uh, TPA, the PID values sooner. Okay. Um, basically, uh, if, if you're having oscillations at the top of your throttle range, add more TPA percent. And if you're having oscillations, throttle related oscillations at the middle of the range, maybe lower the breakpoint. Right. So that's that's one way to think about it. You can think of the TPA percent as setting the top of the range and the TPA breakpoint as setting where where that effect starts to happen at the bottom of the range. But you do need to have your TPA breakpoint slightly lower than the point where oscillations begin to happen. Because, of course, if you set the breakpoint exactly where oscillations start to happen, well, that's where there is zero reduction. And you won't actually get any reduction until slightly higher areas. All right. Well, hope that's helpful and happy flying.